What is up guys, this is Linthio, coming at you with a brand new deck profile of my uh, Herald of Perfection deck for January 1st, 2014. Now the deck has undergone some changes, most notably the third Christia that is now legal. So this is kind of like the big change in the deck, the fact that we have an access to the third Christia is huge. And the way that the format is planning out by the looks of it, it's not set in stone just yet, uh, so let's not get our hopes up, but the format is planning out to be a slow format or a kind of a mid-paced format. It's not going, it doesn't look like it's going to be completely like OTK based and massively fast like the Dragon format was, uh, format just gone, or the one we're technically currently still in. Um, now don't forget this 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 kind of like list is only up till March um and it's going to change with the new obviously light swans coming out and you know other things it it I think the format's going to speed up next format will speed up but this one I think should be okay so this is where Harold's going to kind of uh do well I think and Harold's going to be one of my main decks that I'm going to be running so without further ado I'll get into the deck profile um and I will be going over like different options in a different video of what you can play in Herald. So without further ado, I won't comment on the ones that we need to comment on, uh, just only the slight changes. So the first one is three Herald of Perfection. If you don't run three, you don't play the deck. Then we have three Manju. As always, the DT is representing. Uh, Manju is just like an amazing card. It's really needed in the deck at three. One of the changes we have one Senju, another DT Senju. Um, yes, I do have all like the ritual stuff in playset DT because just that's so nice. Anyway, reason for Senju is this is a transmodify build. I've gone back to the transmodify build for the start of the format. Uh, reason being is because the format has slowed down. I feel that and in testing it's been doing well. I feel that it having access to that Tethys and being able to actually outspeed your opponent at times to in in a matter of getting resources is really useful. And it actually works quite well, and even if you don't get all the combo pieces, combo pieces straight away for Tethys play, it's not crippling like it was before. So this is why I've gone back to the Tethys build for now. Uh, sorry, the uh, yeah Tethys build for now. And instead of having a Yaksha, for example, I know that it's going to be a back row heavy format, but I've decided to test out the Senju just for a little bit extra speed, just literally to try and get more speed in. Uh, reasons for not running Sonic Bird, I know that Sonic Bird has more access to the spells obviously and we don't have as, in this deck you don't have as much searching ability for the spells as opposed to the monster, but this has more synergy with the deck being a light and a fairy whereas Sonic Bird is a wind and a wing beast. So you know it, does, it doesn't really fit in the deck that much and if there's anything that I want to top deck, I want to top deck a fairy, you know, that case being that um, Herald is there, and I'm, I'm running out of trap, uh, running out of hand traps. Let's carry on. We have three, yes, three Christia. I do apologise for the proxy. You guys know, regulars know that I hate having proxies in deck profiles. But the amount of people that actually wanted me to pull up this deck profile and really wanted me to put it up quickly, it just kind of overpowered that and had to sacrifice that. I do have another secret Christia coming, and the reason being it's secret Christia. Um, but yeah, I so apologies uh, if you're first watching my video, this is the first video watching, apologies that there is a proxy there, but a lot of people of my regulars wanted me to get a video out to show them the new build for Herald, how it's going to turn out, so yeah, that's it. So going on to the Christia, Christia at 3 is, I think, a, ne a, a necessary thing. A lot of people might say, Christia at 3, too much. Mm, I disagree. If you can get this card fast, then you can adapt your plays at the very start of the duel. You can kind of assume, okay, I've got Christia in hand, I'm going to try and, you know, control the grave and see what I do from there. And I still stand to this day to say I have got Christia and Harold out and never lost. I genuinely have never lost when I've had Christia and Harold out because it is a stupid lock. You can get around it indeed. But it is such a good lock that it is quite impossible, near impossible to get around. So that's the reason for having Christia at three. Uh, then we have another boss monster, which is Master Hyperion. Hyperion is just amazing. This card is just too good and completely overlooked, and a lot of people forget it's even there. So I think Hyperion is a must at three. Uh, then we have the, uh, going on to the agents, we have the three... Uh, Agent Venus and the Shine Balls to accompany it. Don't really need to say much about that. Keep it at three and keep it at three because, you know, 
they complement each other. Two Earth is still two Earth. I still think three, even though you do have access to the third. I think three is too much. Doesn't add that much to the deck. For example, if you say, well, you've added in a third Christia, why don't you add in a third Earth? Reason being, one, space. Two, Christia brings a lot more to the table than Earth does. Earth gets you that search and it's a tune at level two, but it's not gonna stay there for very long. You special summon that Christia. It doesn't take up your normal summon that you wanna reserve for your Manjus or your uh, Senju, for example. Um, while Earth also get, while Earth gets a card from your deck, Christia gets one back from your grave that you can recycle. And obviously, Christia's biggest thing is you can't, you're, well, no one can special summon. So that's why Christia is at three and Earth is at two, but it's still good at two. Then we have Tethys, always running at two, had it at three, way too cloggy, saw it too much because you, you never want to see this card in your hand. You always want to see it in the deck, getting out by Transmodify. So yeah, Tethys at two, really good. Um, and worst case, if it is in your hand, it's just, you can tribute summon it. I have tribute summoned it a fair bit, but it is mainly just Herald fodder. Uh, then we have two um, Herald of Orange of Light. This might go to three again. I did have it at three in the previous format. I'm not sure how critical and earth-shattering for the duels that first turn effects are going to be against this deck. Like, your opponent, in, in previous, um, previous formats, sorry, against the dragons, when they had that Dragos at first turn, you kind of wanted to get rid of it because you knew that next turn you were going to get a complete onslaught of, uh, of, basically, effects, and the fact that... <sighs> If, for example, like if they had a Drago sack out and you negate it with uh, Herald of Light, you know, it's good, it's out of the way. They don't get their tokens, so they're kind of like left open unless they want to waste their resources again. If they're wasting their resources, that's good for us. Even though we've got rid of two cards, next turn, while well, you've got Herald out, you're going to get rid of at least two straight away anyway, just to stop that Draco sack and the play from the Draco sack. So it's good to just get it, get it out of the way. Then we have the one uh, Gel and Duo. Really good card. I think that it's going to come into its own next format because slow format, it's going to be nice just to have a defender that doesn't die. And also it's a good transmodify target because you can kind of sit on it a little bit. Um, whether or not I'll bump it up to two, I don't know. I've tested it. I, mm, it was fine, but I'm just keeping it at one for now. Honest, because Honest is a boss and doesn't really need to be spoken about. Then we have the other two uh, vanillas. Uh, we have Megami and Demise. Um... Demise is the best level for normal fairy in my opinion. Spirit of the Harp I just think is not that great. Spirit of the Harp is alright for defending but if you're on the back foot and if, you, if you're in a situation where you need to like get your normal summons out, the fact is you're going to want a beater than a defender. But that's, I suppose that's down to people's different um, playing style. So that's 29 monsters there, so obviously keeping a nice high uh, ratio. Then we have kind of standard spells, we have the advanced ritual art, don't really need to say much about that. That card will go to three, I think, in the next coming formats. Um, two trying to modify, three is way, 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 way too much. You do not need three, in my opinion, and I think two is a really nice number, it stays there nicely, and uh, I see it when I need to. So, yeah, whenever I've had three, it's been way too cloggy. Preparation of rights, another one you can have at three. Um, I just don't have the space to have it at three. One Magical Mallet. There, I really like this card, especially when there's a Tethys there, because it gives you ridiculous plays. But basically, this card replenishes your hand when you have Tethys. And even if you don't have Tethys, it means you can get to your combo cards quicker. So the chances of having this, um, the chances of getting Herald out with this are just a lot higher. So I really like the card, and I wouldn't have it. Well, I might have it at two, but I, I really am struggling for space. Same with this card. I'd love to have this at two, but I really can't find the space currently. Um, but yeah, that card is just great to top deck. And then the one, Dawn of the Herald, because every, again, I say this every time, every time I want to take this out, it saves my arse. In the last test, um, I literally was on the back foot and had, uh, I had the um, Megami in hand and Herald, and I was like, great, like all my normals are in the grave. What am I going to do? I drew into that. I was just like, too good, too good. And then the final two, which are traps, a Royal Decree. Now, the reasoning for Royal Decree, and you notice that I don't have Vanity's Emptiness. Sorry for hitting the camera there. Uh, the reason for not having Vanity's Emptiness is because I don't think there's going to be that much that much special summoning next format. 
There is going to be special summon, it's not like it's going to vanish, but I do think that it's not going to be at the level that dragons were, and I think everyone expects that. No one really thinks that a deck's going to take the place of dragons in that power. But, Vanity's Emptiness has been dropped to the side, uh, which is fair enough, in my opinion. Like, it's, it's a great card, it's an amazing card for Herald, and it's three in the side, because three is just too good. But... As I said, back row format, Royal Decree is needed. That's why I don't have any MSTs. MSTs also in the side, but Royal Decree mains for now. It catches people off guard, and you can protect it like a boss. So going on to the extra deck, I do realise I spoke for about 15 minutes there on the on the, uh, on the main deck, but I needed to justify some uh, some choices. So we have um, Angel of Zero, Scrap Dragon for level eights. This is by the way uh, Stardust. Uh, Sorry, yep, Stardust Spark Dragon and Crimson Blader for the level 8s. So, kind of like standard level 8s, so you don't need to say much about that. For the level 7s, we have Inch Shaker Wyvern and Black Rose. I'm just going to speed through these because they're all the same. Gaia, level 6. Then level 5s, we have Armadis and uh, Catasta. Uh, then for the ranks, we have uh, Starleash Pal Dynamo and Abyss Dweller. The reason for Abyss Dweller is Megalos are going to be good next format. This format, whatever you want to say. So that's why it's there. Uh, 10 tempo, just in case I go up against uh, Evil Swarms and any annoying XYZs. And then the level 2 ranks. Uh, we have Gachi Gachi, Dark Mist, and uh, Diagosto Phoenix. So that is the deck profile, guys. The first one of uh, the Herald format. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I really am enjoying playing this deck currently. I know I do have another couple of decks that you guys see uh, on my channel. But Herald is really good, and yeah. So that's it guys, let me know what you think, and yeah, comment down below. Cheers guys!